the Pain Medicine Fellowship at Mayo Clinic Rochester, I truly believe this is the best program we have in the country. What we're trying to achieve here is, frankly, fellows and trainees who are just not going to put a needle in everybody that walks through the door, but actually have a good sense, a wide sense, of the comprehensive nature of chronic pain management. This exposure from our fellows into our program and working with this multidisciplinary team reflects the type of practices they will likely encounter post-graduation. And what better way to get ready for that than to be exposed to that during training. My hope is that this video just gives you a slight glimpse into what it feels like to be a fellow here on campus. Hi everybody, my name is John Kuznowski and I'm one of the current pain fellows here at Mayo Clinic Rochester. I'm the fellow that's on call this week, so I thought it'd be a good idea to give you a little glimpse into my morning routine and what a typical day on call looks like. Here we go. I'll usually get in around 7 a.m. First things first, I need to check in with my consultant to determine the flow of the day. Good morning, Dr. O. Okay. Plan to start St. Mary's today? Perfect. I'll head over to the shower right now. All right, see you soon. Thank you. I'm making my way over to St. Mary's campus to round on the pain service. You can certainly walk between the two campuses. It's about a mile or so. Or you can take the shuttle. That's normally my preferred route. It runs every 15 minutes or so, and it's very convenient. Plus, it gives you time to sit down, relax, check up on emails, and just listen to music. All right, everybody, we are on the employee shuttle bus between the two campuses, heading over to St. Mary's campus to go around with Dr. O. I'm heading to the inpatient pain service office. I'm gonna check in with the team and see the patients as needed. We typically have a large team of nurses, APPs, pharmacists, and residents on the service. My role is to serve as a sub-consultant attending while teaching residents as well. Once I'm done here, I'll make my way over to Methodist campus and round on patients there. The strength of our fellowship is really due to the faculty, the faculty who are national leaders in research, who are national leaders in societies such as North American Neuromodulation Society, the American Pain Medicine. They are the leaders who are establishing and contributing to guidelines, to new innovations, and they are here working side by side with fellows on a daily basis. So we have national faculty who are giving didactics, who are giving bedside teaching rounds, and who are teaching in our cadaver labs. I am responsible for running the cadaver sim center lab, which is again a, a protected portion of the early part of the year. So for several days early in training, we have several uh, opportunities working with our surgical experts to be able to review all the principles of neuromodulation, indications, contraindications, the actual practical application on live cadavers. It is actually very incredible to see how quickly our trainees progress and gain the autonomy needed. And by the time they graduate, they're more or less running the show. And uh, it's actually very rewarding to see that progress. They've come to appreciate all aspects of pain management and they tend to hit the ground running relatively quickly in their programs and their practices. Really, whatever path you want to pave for yourself, the program really helps facilitate that. For, from my perspective, I was looking for not only a good, solid education, but also research. I was able to get that. Each of the consultants do do different procedures, so their area of interest allows you to kind of grow and take what's the best of what you can take out of each learning opportunity. You know, there's a lot of diversity and, and breadth of procedures. You, you get basically, if you're looking for neuromodulation, we do a lot of spinal cord simulators, a lot of peripheral nerve simulators, novel procedures that have just been invented recently, like basal vertebral nerve ablation, um, stem cells and regen is another hot topic. We get to do that over here. We have well-rounded didactics. We talk about grand rounds, m and conferences, journal clubs. We have this scheduled pretty regularly. We also have some world-renowned uh, faculty that are that are won teaching awards. Those aspects of the program also drew me here, and I think that's an advantage of the program in that you want to be able to train all the procedures that you could potentially get so that way when you go out in the real world, you're, you're prepped and ready to offer the best type of care you can for your patients. There's more than enough procedures to go around, and I like it because we kind of all bounce ideas off of each other. We all sit in the same little alcove and have our computers next to each other and talk about, well, what would you do in this case? And so I, I really do appreciate the fact that we're a close enough knit group that we can have that banter. 
a unique opportunity for fellows at our institution is the collaboration with faculty to create unique case reports, case series, or research projects that can be presented at national meetings. This travel and registration of conferences is supported by our Graduate Medical Education Office and is supported financially as well as with time from the institution. So I could tell you that if Mayo was not here, I'd still probably live in Rochester. Mayo is nice because it is not in a, that big crowded city, that crowded environment. You're still getting the same kind of educational benefits that world-renowned experts and leaders that work here. But then you get the benefits of living in a nice, less congested type city like Rochester. Pain medicine, it's been something that I've always wanted to do. Going to the residency, knowing that I wanted to be a pain doctor was definitely something that inspired me. So coming here, moving across from the East Coast, I trained in Philadelphia, and kind of really kind of getting my feet wet just walking around the campus. It was really amazing just to see how well the campus traffic runs. And then on top of that, just to see how friendly the staffs are in welcoming patients or visitors. And stuff. That's been an amazing experience. The person that they're trying to teach, you are the center of their focus and they want to make sure that you get a good education. They want to make sure that you're feeling heard and they're happy to give you life advice on top of that. So I really admire this institution and I'm so happy that I've been here. Our program is designed to center around our trainees, but at the same time, our trainees also have their needs and, and that could come in the form of being pulled away for emergencies, wellness initiatives, and when that occurs, we still function as a clinic. People need to take that into account when choosing a program. Is this a program that will find it very difficult for you to step away if needed, or is this a program that will support you through anything that might occur, because that's just life. Such a great feeling to be able to be surrounded by people who are all interested in teaching you, who are all very humble but also very high up in the field and are doing extraordinary things on their own. I mean, that's the biggest thing that I'm going to miss about Mayo. If I could take Mayo with me back home, I would because I just, I love the people. And I'm not just talking about, you know, the attendings and physicians that I work with. I'm talking about the ancillary staff, the APPs, the radiology technologists that we work with. Everyone is so focused on teaching and being supportive and just making every day great. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video and hopefully we get to work together in the near future. <laughs>